the afternoon. Um, so the, the, the bit that I'm most interested in from an outcome perspective is going to be that early afternoon block. Uh, so just sort of be thinking about, has anything here resonated with you about maybe standardizing a W3C or standardizing in general and maybe finding an online TF or whatever, right? Um, so we'll just be thinking about that. And I think Julian is set up now, and I'm going to turn it over to him. Uh, Thank you very much, Doug. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Julian Smith. I'm the technical co-founder and CEO of Lockray. Um, I'm also the one of the founding members of Melbourne Bitcoin Technology Centre. So just an open invitation if anyone's coming to Melbourne, Australia, please come to our 600 square metre co-working space and um, uh, come and have a chat about Bitcoin. So. Block Freight is the project that I'm currently working on. Uh, so what is Block Freight? Block Freight is a blockchain of global freight. What we're looking to build is a blockchain upon essentially seeing ourselves as a way to, to make more efficient the global supply chain for container freight. That um, is about 90% of all the products that we use have spent time inside of a cargo container. So how, our, how the block freight network works is we have a counterparty asset that counterparty asset is the block freight token. We retail that token for one US dollar per token and it acts as a network fee. So uh, parties on the network uh, announce a transaction into the network, which is essentially a XML JSON uh, documentation or a bill of lading. And upon verification, uh, validators in the network include those transactions in um, yeah, so we're using counterparty, it's built on Bitcoin, uh, we're looking at a permission ledger uh, built on Tendermint. So there are 360 million container movements annually. Um, and why are we building this? We're looking to deal with some issues that, that face uh, container freight. So uh, demurrage withholding and tension is essentially when a container is sent to its destination but it's not collected in time. So the, the port will charge the mover of the goods, essentially the customer, uh, daily fees of 100 US dollars before they can take that off the, off the dock. Um, to eliminate fraud, there are cases where the documentation in shipping is used to access uh, finance. Uh, if you generate uh, fraudulent documents for goods that don't exist, it means that you can access finance for uh, bogus goods, um, and also the potential to streamline international compliance. So some countries will have uh, particular attitudes towards particular classes of goods. Uh, there is potentially an opportunity for um, a, a compliance um, uh, application layer to, to uh, create a, uh, an oracle for goods that have been moved to see that they are consistent with where those goods have been sent. Uh, legacy documentation costs are, are significant. Um, we have uh, started a block rate consortium to essentially have uh, partners come and define what the what the standard for our transaction should be. Um, anyone that's interested in working with us should uh, reach out and uh, join our consortium. Um, uh, that's our history. Um, that's us. Uh, if anyone's interested in blockchain applications for container freight, uh, please feel free to contact me and thank you for your attention this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you have a question? Yeah. Uh, is there a linkage here to RFID technology and all of that? Yeah, so um, RFID technology and uh, physical internet of things is uh, uh, something that uh, Michael Lemmy at a uh, EU uh, based uh, research center is working with uh, IBM's Hyperledger to, to create on a, uh, a project for them.
they're, they're currently working on. Uh, within Australia, the, uh, there's a team at uh, one of our local universities that's equally looking at um, uh, smart devices that are potentially going to be part of uh, our network, but ultimately, wherever there are uh, hardware applications that, that make goods um, uh, trackable, uh, that, that's the kind of use case where we'd love to have those partners join our consortium and participate in the network. We'd also like to have partners join our consortium. <laughs> so, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, we've already clapped. I know it's up. My head, you want to? So, the next up, we have my head. She's going to be talking about uh, something interesting uh, to many of us, which is uh, the blockchain in a browser. Thank you, Joel. So are there anything, is there anything that people want to make sure that we talk about tomorrow? Uh, lightning talks or, or other topics? I think what we talked about today so much, I'd like to talk about it again, except for a highly condensed form. So like there's like, like the best of from today, like the 15 major outcomes so we could look at them and then build on it. I would love that. I can't think of it right now because it was all fractured. Yeah, so tomorrow, like I, I said earlier, we're going to try to summarize the, some of the things that we talked about today. I, uh, I, I think everything, I think different bits are going to be different, interesting to different people, so I don't think it is the top 15. Um, but Everybody, we can we can certainly have. I mean, that's what the dot voting thing is that Christopher is going to help us through. Is going to do is going to be yeah, expect me to identify those things, and that's really happy. Uh, I'd like to spend a bit of time to figure out how we're all going to keep in touch with each other once the workshop's over. And specifically, and I'm, I'm thinking not email, not IRC. As much as I hate to admit it, Slack has been really good at keeping to get, keeping people together after workshops and things like this that happen. So I'm wondering if we could add everyone to a Slack channel and then see where that goes. That sounds like a good idea. I think what I maybe we can try to set up tonight, maybe or tomorrow morning or something. Okay. Maybe I won't think this is a terrible idea. But what about if there's two or three or however many individuals that are you know willing to riff on something that could potentially turn into stranger that are willing to stand up and formally say that at least their intent is to work together on a specific piece or code or code thing. Like I don't know if that's like I don't know a lot of organizations can do that in the room, but if some can it'd be cool. I kind of think that might we can we can integrate that into the whole doc voting thing that we're gonna be doing tomorrow because there is that sort of aspect of we're going to we're going to do this thing. So, um, okay. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mahesh. Hello, everyone. I'm Mahesh. I work for the browser, and we are looking at the next block actually, just very close. So, some of you. Before the world, or before the supply is something it's a browser. Yes, we do. We make the browser. And it's actually any market share. You can see some of it. Uh, it's, you could say it's a popular browser in North America right now. Now it's still 7.5 market share right now, but it's better in Europe and other countries. And it's increasing. So that's on a certain platform. Right, I'll get to that. So, so why is this number? It's because so Samsung is a pre-installed 
rather than more Samsung devices, and and Samsung has a huge share of Android ecosystem. So, um, so yeah, we we are a Chromium-based browser, and Samsung is also a big contributor uh, of Chromium project. In fact, they're second biggest after Google, uh, and the browser also gets. On Samsung devices, we get updates from the Play Store or the Google Samsung Store. So these are the list below that is all the browsers we have for different like devices and platforms. So some some very some features of the browser. The we have a device specific hardware features that are hooked up in the browser, like like the fingerprint sensors and mouse direction. So we introduced last us uh, in there, I think uh, a secret mode is basically kind of a private mode browsing where all the data it's it's enhanced uh, private mode browsing where the data is encrypted and stored in Knox. This one is the strongest hardware secured solution from Samsung. And we also use uh, some fingerprint sensor feature for your login information, for example, to keep the settings in there. Uh, and we have been a big supporter of progressive web apps, we didn't really talk about it, we uh, talked with developers to have, uh, get their interest in progressive web apps and uh, browser support progressive web apps. We introduced uh, content building extensions last year, and we also have a new feature that's where we are still under. Uh, so not at the disease spec yet, but it is getting there. And and yeah, uh, there has been a lot of interest in developers to to build content on VR, so we have that. And we're working on web pages. Uh, that's why we are in this. So just before we get into that, we also have a browser recently released for VR. That's the VR browser. Uh, which basically lets you experience the web in virtual reality. It supports 360 degree 3D video playback. Uh, like you can see in the second screen here, you can basically move from a single video view to a full screen video view. Very similar to that, where we are, let's, let's a web page go to a 360 degree MSA view. Uh, so that Shopify has built a built up the page for us. Uh, it, it takes advantage of this. It's it's basically lets you shop uh, in, on a on three sixty degree experience. and that's that's the web we are support. Uh, so on the payment side, so we're working on uh, integrating some of the payment apps. Uh, we are also member of the BTC payment working group, and we help to standardize the APIs. And we have some core members here. Uh, um, so this is what would, the typical flow would be. We've seen it in the Chrome browser, uh, very similar flow to the engine you about. Uh, so if you have any of you that are interested in bringing your app as a payment option, you can check the stuff. And this is our interest. Uh, this is right there. We are interested in micro payments. We and there are multiple reasons for micro payments. We have our physical web uh, use cases, we have IoT use cases, and we finally want to pay content creators uh, and, and not just, uh, you know, uh, sorry. So, so those are the use cases for the micropayments, and we're interested in uh, integrity of uh, identity and blockchain APIs. Uh, so, I'm here basically to shout out and say, hey, you guys want help from Samsung to help if you want some sort of quick prototype, we are here. You could, you could, you could reach us and uh, we want to get any questions. Okay, I see. Hi, testing. Uh, I see a few questions. Uh, just FYI, uh, we're gonna have one more presentation. Uh, Juan has uh, suggested he split this. Not quite yet. Has suggested he split this presentation. He's gonna talk a little bit about IPFS today, and then he's gonna do this other stuff tomorrow. So uh, the questions for, okay, let's get it. Uh, quick question with a little bit of little IoT bias. 
Uh, I saw, I think, on page three, you had a mention of uh, browser for Tizen, and Tizen is your operating system of wearable devices. I didn't see any mention of Arctic. So, can you share any experiences of you know small compact uh, devices and browser impact? So, I didn't mention Arctic and only Tizen because uh, that's the so uh, the Tizen uh, platform is using the same web uh, Chromium web based uh, solution that we are using for other browsers, and uh, it will inherit the same web payment solution. Uh, so, um, so I'm right now I'm not very clear if Arctic would be uh, how to impact with the web payment solution. If, uh, so I, I think I think that it, there is more important data, but right now I don't have any data. So I'm just interested in what APIs you think you're looking for besides what's already going on in the W3C as far as web crypto, the credentials work, and the web authentication work. Um, that's a good question. That's when you early said we just got into uh, blockchain a week ago and I'm just reading about it. So the kind of use case, very broad use case I've had in mind is like, you know, if browser could be a wallet, browser could be a, a, a cryptocurrency wallet, right? And browser can keep track of, uh, so, and, and content creators can charge, say, for example, YouTube can charge one cent uh, per, per video view. And browser could uh, combine all the videos that you watch and make a good enough uh, amount of transactions so you can justify the fees and everything, and then and then make a, make a payment with that. So, uh, so on those lines, I don't have a, uh, I, yeah, I would, I would come up with some format that would say those cases. Any more questions? Okay, great. And to close this out, we're going to have Juan talk about IPFS and the future of the internet. Thank you. We use the sort of interledger protocol for connecting devices. Um, is there, is, could you put it on the web? I mean, it's on the web already. I can take it on the web already. I'm going to take it on this web. I think I'll come on to that. But is there another one that you can do? Sorry. We're going to solve this particular problem tomorrow, and uh, I thank you all for your attention, and I thank you for attending and for making this a pretty amazing event. And I will see you all. Oh, oh sure. Uh, so yeah, so we'll, one's not going to. We, we ran into technical problems, so it's not going to be this presentation. So we're going to One's going to talk tomorrow. Okay. Um, so we're going to get started at 8.30, if that's kosher with everybody. I think probably, what's that? It's, no, we're, we're not there. <laughs> um, uh, so at 8.30 tomorrow, uh, probably, you know, uh, we'll try to do a little bit of summary in the morning, and then we'll try to start straight into the um, uh, into the the the, uh, uh, the next sessions, the next uh, lightning talks. Uh, so Daniel, you had a suggestion about people coming up and yeah, okay. So meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody, and. Uh, so now uh, we've got some. We've got a mic. Anybody want to come up and suggest uh, a place to meet for a particular topic? So we heard a couple of suggestions uh, before. 
and the wind up. So, what were those suggestions again? Someone said, Saint Something's Fire or Meat Hall. Okay, Meat Hall, and there's like one other one. I just want to make sure I restated them as possible options. Something Saint, something. Something Saint. <laughs> Why is Rand Saint? If they're not here, they could have been too invested in drinking at that place. Okay, Mead Me Hall, is that the place that everyone likes? It's pretty cool around here? It's not Firebrand Saints. <laughs> what? Other. Firebrand Saints is the other. And that's outside uh, seating. Uh, outside seating, I'm told. But, uh, but, the, but, the, but, the, but the food. But the food at Mead Hall is apparently not great. So if people want to, I mean, it's pub food. But we, we, we've got a bunch of locals, or we have some locals around. Um, I am among them. So uh, if you are looking for a particular kind of food, um, you feel free to ask. Decent beer. Um, decent decent beer good beer selection, Mead Hall, or Cambridge Brewing Company. Yeah. So is there a feeling in the room? Like, did you probably get it? What is, what is the thing? Best beer is Mead Hall. Best beer selection is Mead Hall. You can remember the name. What's it called? Firebrand Saints, she says, has good beer and good food. I've never been there. I don't know. Uh, That's pretty close. I looked it up on the map. It's like two blocks. Yeah. Um, are there particular topics people want to get together to talk about? That might be more interesting. Uh, I'm going to talk about identity, actually. Being <laughs> so one thing I'm having to talk about, I'm going to shut down by tomorrow. Uh, Browns are actually dissolving blockchain identities inside tabs. Um, based on what type they are, so if it's a person or something else, uh, I'll show that demo tomorrow. But I'm happy to talk about it tonight. So. Also, for people into the DAO, for folks that are into the DAO distributed autonomous organizations, um, some of us will probably be talking about uh, the automated legal entity project and how you could have a DAO that was basically mirrored what secretaries of state would be looking for to create a corporation or LLC and annual filing to dissolve that or federally chartered entities. So, so how can we get it so we can sue and be sued be a legal entity and automate And where are you going to drink that? Yeah, probably Firebrand Saints. Firebrand Saints, automation of drinking. <laughs> where, where are you going? All right, I might go to the Firebrand Saints. They said they have good food. And I did do since yesterday, so. Yep. Go there. Thank you very much. Good night.